Just making sure we are live and ready to go. All right. Get my Moobot in here. And <clears throat> try to get this party started. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good evening. Um, welcome to welcome to the stream for this evening. I'm going to be doing a tutorial, a speedrunning tutorial of an older DOS game called uh, Mixed Up Fairy Tales. Um, this is a game that was developed and published by an older game company known as uh, Sierra Online. Uh, this game is a, follow, a proper follow-up to the 1987 sequel Mixed Up Mother Goose. Um, Mixed Up Mother Goose was released back in 1987 for the Apple Amiga systems and other PCs out there today. Um, it was also re-released eventually on uh, the DOS operating system at the time a few years later. The game I'm going to be showing you to tonight is going to be Mixed Up Fairy Tales and I'm going to properly and thoroughly explain how the mechanics of the game work and what and how technical it can be to run it. Some parts of the game are technical to run but other parts of it are not not so much. What I'm using here for the configuration is uh, DOSBox version 0 0.73. Um, I have it at 38,500 cycles and the reason is, is because the load times from one area to another using the default 3000 cycle can be a little bit slow. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am the lone moderator and administrator of uh, Mixed Up Fairy Tales on speedrun.com. Currently, um, I figured it would be time to kind of do a full tutorial on this game and basically explain how the mechanics of it all work. So without further ado, let's dive into it. I refill my cup here. <clears throat> so the composer for the music for this game is a guy known as uh, Mark Siebert, and the producer is Stuart Mulder, and the director is Lori Ann Cole. So this is an adventure educational game, and it has single player only, which is fine. It does not need any more than that. The plot of this game is incredibly simple, and it really doesn't take much to explain. But I'll go ahead and explain it anyway for those that may not have heard of the game or may not know what it is. This is a graphical adventure game that was released by Sierra Online back in 1991. It is a follow-up to Mixed Up Mother Goose and was made for younger players than those of Sierra's King Quest or Space Quest series. In this game, the player controls a child selected from one of six and named at will by the player. Now, before I go any farther, you can name your profile, you can name your character, whatever you want. The name does not dictate or manipulate RNG at all in any way possible. So the name does not matter. The name is irrelevant, but you can name your character whatever you wish. You control one of six characters, and the plot is basically pretty simple. The player is transported to the land of make-believe by the magical dragon Bookworm, who needs their help on knotting the mess that's become of five infamous fairy tales. Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Bremen Town Musicians, Jack and the Beanstalk, and Snow White. Thanks to the machine, thanks to the mechanical mischievous deeds of a spiteful troll named Bookin. For instance, the prince cannot find Cinderella because her glass slip slipper was unfortunately stolen. Jack's axe is missing, so he cannot chop down the beanstalk. And Snow White is lost and needs help finding the seven dwarves' house, etc., etc. Bookworm, who had the book all the stories were recorded in, could always be consulted for directions to the player's next objective when he or she got stuck. The game has a very simple interface, different from other of Sierra games. Instead of several different icons to move the character, look at objects, places and people, operate scenery fixtures, or talk to other characters. This, this game has a general, only a general icon to interact with the environment, 
move the player's character and initiate conversation with other characters and also another to look at the player's surroundings as well. Now, this is an important aspect of this game as well. You cannot die in this game ever. Ever. At all, at any point. It is also impossible to reach a point where, a play, where onward play is not possible because of lacking an important item or piece of required information. The game saving feature mechanic is very simple. It is very simplified. Instead of clicking on one of the icons to save the game, you can press Control Q on your keyboard and it'll tell you game save and it'll say thank you for playing. Um, you can either go back and continue playing or you can go back to the main menu. I'm going to furtherly and properly explain why I do this in the speedruns that I do. Although it, it allowed to interact it, it allowed children to interact with the characters of their favorite fairy tales, most of the story's major events would happen off screen with the player's movement limited to a 4x4 screen area. This is, an, this is another important mechanic that I'm going to go over. I'm going to show you what I mean by the player's movement. Now, the player's movement is on a 4x4 screen area. Tra the, a simple translation for this is the player's movement is very, very slow. But of course, this is designed to be an educational game for children, so obviously, there are other ways to improvise and get around it. So we have a simple menu here. Uh, this is the load saved game here. If you have a previously saved game, you can load it here, or you can start a new game. We're going to go ahead and start a new game here for uh, tutorial purposes. Now these are the six characters. You can choose from one of each, or you can choose one. I always pick, I always pick the one in the middle up here where my cursor is because for me it's simple, it works, and it's what I like. So we're gonna we're gonna name we're gonna name this guy Tutorial because this is again a very thorough, hopefully explained tutorial on how this works. So for speedrunning purposes, this is what happens when I start my timer. Where I start my timer is I press play after I've named my character whatever I wish to name him or her. So I'm going to click play here and this is where I start my timer if I was doing runs. So we are transported here to the library with your main character and this is the first dialogue box that we have here. You have five minutes to pick out a book. Now there are a lot of dialogue boxes like this. One way I speed this up, and this helps me greatly, I hold down both my enter key and I click on left click on my mouse button as fast as I humanly possibly can. But for this kit but in this case we're just gonna slow it down and simplify it. So here we have Bookworm with his first dialogue box here. And it says, hello, can you help me? Your character's obviously surprised. Oh my god, it's a real dragon. This is, this is the infamous dragon known as the Bookworm. He says, I am the Bookworm, who are you? <laughs> and I am Tutorial, because this is what this is in this case. He's very, he's very excited and glad to meet you, and he requests your assistance with help of his book. I need your help. My book is all mixed up. Pull up something here real quick. Screenshots, F10. I'll explain why I pull my fraps up here later. Will you come with me? I want to help you, but I need to stay in the library. Your character is obviously not really sure whether he wants to go in or not because he's worried that he's going to get in trouble by the teacher, by the librarian. But he ensures us it's okay, we can go in, the book is in the library, just follow him. So we are transported to this magical land, so we are transported to this magical place. Uh, so we are transported inside uh, Bookworm's house, and all the stories here are mixed up. So we are in the land of fairy tales. This is his home. He needs our help, 
because someone is trying to mix up all the stories here. Now no one can read them, thanks to the mischievous deeds and the dastardly deeds of a troll named Bookin. Basically, all the tales have lost their names. The name of a story, it's called its title. His book has a list of the story titles. We must first find the place where the stories start. And we walk around until we come to a person or an animal and we initiate conversation with them. And how we initiate conversation with them is very simple, very fluid, and really straightforward. Uh, no technical stuff involved in any way. We have to find out what they say, and you will which, which story they belong to. Once you know which story they belong to, you can open this book and pick the story's title. And I'll go over these buttons up here in just a moment. When you choose the right title, the story will start. Pretty much, he says almost everyone needs our help, but really it's everyone that needs our help. And we have to help them, and of course we are going to do everything we can in our power to help them. He has to stay here and guard his book, so that way Bookin doesn't take the book and try to destroy it or burn it later. A little bit of a spoiler warning. So now, uh, we're going to go down. I move my mouse cursor down because we have to go down and move our character down. So where my cursor is right now, this is the road north, this is south down here, this is west, and this is east. If we go north, we go north to the crossroads here, the sign shows the way to town from there, and we have a few different places to explore from and choose. Many people live in town. If you go south from here, going south down here where my mouse cursor is, is the forest. There's a lot to see and do around here, and we can have fun. Okay, before I move on any further, um, we're, I'm going to explain the buttons up here. So we're going to start with this one here. The do button is basically very simple. Uh, we can move our character any direction we wish or we desire to go. The C button here, or right click, is we can see all that is around the environment. So we can see this waterfall here. This is a waterfall, waterfall that flows down to the stream. This is the house. Bookworm's house has flowers growing on it. This is the birdhouse as a home for a bird. Basically, this is very simple. These are rocks down here, obviously, and we can escape. If we accidentally right-click, uh, press the right-click button again, and then we can move our character up. Okay, so this is the Mixed Up Fairy Tales book that uh, Bookworm mentioned. Basically, we choose from the stories here in this book. This can be pretty tricky to do in a speed run, especially when you're trying to crunch as crunch for t uh, saving time in every split possible. There are times where I reset due to simply going too fast, and that can happen often at times. So we have five stories here, and these can be done in any order that you wish or desire. I have found a path that, it, that I believe is optimal and that works. If there are other people interested in this game that, that have different paths and faster paths, you're more than welcome to let me know either on Discord or here on Twitch or post it on my forum in uh, speedrun.com for this game, and I'd be more than happy to accept any requests in the very near future. So this is the map of the game in general, and for a game like this, this is a pretty large map. It shows all around us where the player's location is currently at and we will go around town explaining or i'll go around town and explaining things but we'll move on as we go this slider up and down key is very simple this is mixed up fairy tales version version 1.0 this is basically the um credits and stuff like that we have the play button we have the save and we quit 
there's going to be there's going to be a moment where I save and quit the game just before we enter the cave, but again, I will explain that as we go. This is the question mark. This is simple. We can click here to find out what things in the menu do, but of course that's not necessary. We don't need to do that. We're going to go ahead and go north, and I will we'll go exploring around town a little bit, and I will go around town explaining the pumpkin, the pumpkin, magic bean, and axe drops as we progress. So we're going to go left here to town. We're going to, I'm going to go either one of two directions. You can either go here, here, or up here. I'll go ahead and move on up. That's the water spigot. So this is the story for Cinderella, how she wishes she could go to the ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to click here and we're going to click the Cinderella story. And it'll say once upon a time. To basically skip, to basically skip the dialogue boxes as fast as possible, hold down the enter key and left click the mouse the first mouse button as fast as you can this is for me the fastest way to skip all the dialogue boxes as much as possible which we have to do a lot this is something else we also have to do to speed up the character's movement because due to the fact that the character movement is extremely slow we have to speed that up to save time So one of the first story items here we find for Cinderella is the pumpkin. We find out here that the pumpkin is missing and we have to go retrieve it. She cannot do her magic without the pumpkin. So we are sent on this task to go find the pumpkin for the fairy godmother and Cinderella. So that way she can have a happy ending to the story. So we are going to go find the pumpkin. I'm going to take pictures of where the optimal spawn points for these items are going to be and I'm going to furtherly explain why these are the most <laughs> optimal, optimal spawn points for these items. But first we're going to go find the pumpkin. So sometimes um, the pumpkin will spawn right here, which is where you want the pumpkin to be. If the pumpkin is right here, you can left click where the pumpkin is and go right here and retrieve it. And then you can make your way back to town and give the pumpkin to uh, the fairy godmother so she can perform her magic. If it's not up here, there is a second spawn point where the pumpkin will be. And it'll be right here where we rescue the donkey. So there are times where the pumpkin will be right here. If it's not, if it's not down here where you find the donkey for the Bream and Town Musician story, or where you find Snow White for the Snow White story, we have to go all the way to Bremen to find it. There's also one more spawn point where we can find the pumpkin. We're going to go up here, we're going to make our way to either buy the shed at Bremen, or we're going to go up and find it by the lake. Up here is where we do part of the story and finish the rest of the story for Jack and the Beanstalk. But for now we're going to go find the pumpkin. This is one, one of two of the worst spawn points to find the pumpkin. Because having to go all the way to Bremen to find this pumpkin either right here by this shed or up here by this lake. Or up here by this pond as 
as I should have called it from the beginning. If the pumpkin is not up here by this pond, it will be down here by the shed over in Bremen. This is the second worst uh, spawn point for the pumpkin to be, and every once in a great while, this can happen. It's not very often, but every once in a while, the pumpkin will spawn up here, and it can be, it can be a tall task having to go all the way from the pond on the other side of Bremen back to where you have to take the pumpkin to the fairy godmother. Same here with the pumpkin being down here by the shed over in Bremen. So we're going to retrieve the pumpkin and we're going to take it back to the fairy godmother. Those two points those two, those two um, spawn points for the pumpkin, magic bean or axe, are two of the biggest, are just a couple of the biggest reasons why I reset. And the reason I reset is because my time loss would be too big and I would not be able to come back from that, that deficit for that time loss, even if I got really good spawn points for the magic bean and axe for the Jack and the Beanstalk story. I'm gonna take another picture here real quick before we go return the pumpkin to Cinderella. Right here where my mouse cursor is is where you want the magic beans to spawn only, not the axe. If the axe spawns here in town, that's a reset point at least for me because it's too far out and again the time loss is too big to come back from so we're gonna go across here real quick and I'm going to explain why the optimal spawn point for the axe is gonna be where you start the Snow White story So right here where you start the Snow White story is where you want the axe to spawn at all times. And the reason for that is because it is the shortest, quickest, most optimal path to take because you only have to go up a couple of screens and the time save is significant. It helps out very, very greatly. Another spawn point for the axe can be right here by this tree or this also goes with the magic bean also or it could be right down here just before you go to the cave but we're not going to go to the cave right now I will explain the cave as we get closer I keep my mouse cursor over here where my character is moving and the reason is is because if you move the mouse cursor at all for any reason or if you bump it on accident your character stops and you lose that movement speed and you have to gain it back and thus can, it can be a tall task trying to restore the movement speed you have originally. This is a pump. The pump is used to get water here for this. So we're going to go up and we're going to go return the pumpkin to the fairy godmother. So we found the missing pumpkin and Cinderella can go to the ball. So we're going to put the pumpkin over here so the fairy godmother can do her magic. Basically, remember to get home before the stroke of midnight. Basically, the fairy godmother tells us thank you for your help. 
They both appreciate it. And so now, this is only part one of the Cinderella story that's finished. So now we're going to go left here, and we're going to have dialogue over here with the prince. Cinderella's running off because it's before the stroke of midnight, and he's saying, please come back, don't leave. And he's like, I don't even know your name, how can I find you? He's like, look, she lost her slipper, I'll return it to her. I will only marry the one who can wear the slipper. So we see the mischievous troll named Bookin, and he's going to steal the slipper so she'll never find it, and thus she will never have a happy ending. Fortunately, this part of the story is not randomized. This, this only has one consistent spawn point, and it's right by the tree in the forest, and I will properly explain that too as we go along. And we see the prince not being brave enough to stop that troll. However, we get sent on this task to stop the troll from stealing the shoe, or the slipper in this case. So now, we're gonna go, re we're gonna go retrieve the slipper. I go right here because the dialogue, the dialogue for Cinderella is smaller and shorter as a po the dialogue box is smaller and the dialogue is shorter with Cinderella as opposed to coming down here and starting the Beauty and the Beast story. Instead of going down, we're going to go right here. Cinderella will say, Hello, thank you for your help. I had a wonderful time at the ball. So now, we're going to go down. So down here is the slipper. This is where the slipper will always be at. This will never change. This spawn point for the slipper will always be consistent. It's right here. And by going through Cinderella, we skip an additional dialogue box of Bookin. He'll just kind of laugh and stick and be like, eh, 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 eh. she'll never find the slipper. So now we're gonna pick the slipper up. We're going to make our way back up. We're gonna cross this bridge. Down here where the hand is was the Cherry River, and often at times, it can be very easy to click on the Cherry River, and it'll say, the river tastes like cherries, the water is delicious. And thus, by accidentally clicking on the Cherry River, it costs about four or five seconds. More, most likely longer than that too, because your character will go over there, drink some water, and we'll get a dialogue box saying, how delicious the Cherry River is. And it tastes like cherries, basically. So now we're gonna go back to the prince, and we're gonna tell him we found the slipper. <clears throat> Excuse me. He's wondering, waiting to know if we found the slipper. We tell him, yes, we found the slipper, here it is. Now we're going to go find Cinderella together. This is pretty straightforward. There's nothing I can do to speed up the movement of the, of the NPC characters. They walk that speed because it's very slow. But of course, this is designed to be a children's educational game. But again, there are ways we can speed up the movement of our character and not the NPCs. So we'll get a back and forth between the prince and Cinderella to see if it's the one he wants to marry, and it turns out, yes, yes, she does. They both thank us for our help. This is where my first split goes, when it says, and they lived happily ever after. This is where I split for my first split. Now we can either go right and do the Jack and the Beanstalk story, or we can head down 
and do the Beauty and the Beast story. And for speedrunning purposes, I simply go down and do the uh, Beauty and the Beast story second because it is faster to go down and skip the dialogue of Beauty and the Beast, skip the dialogue for Beauty, and we can start the Beauty and the Beast story right away. This is a large castle. So we're going to go down, and we're going to do the Beauty and the Beast story next. So we skip the dialogue for Beauty, and our character moves down here towards this fence, and we're going to do Beauty and the Beast. Now we're going to go south of town to a maze, and I'll show you. So down here is south of town. To the left of us here is the house for the Seven Dwarf story for Snow White. To the right here is going to be the Beauty and the Beast story. Here we see Beauty's father. Wanting, he's wanting to find the rose now to transform the beast back into a prince again. So now we're going to go through this gate. And this is the maze that, this is one of the mazes we go through, and then the real maze will be just right up here. So I click right up here and move my character here. What you want to do for this, while you're going through this maze, let go of the enter key. Do not hold down the enter key, because if you do, your character movement will slow down and be inconsistent, meaning you're going to lose time and the movement speed of your character. So we're going to click this rose here, and your character will automatically walk to this maze, find the rose, and then we're going to click back down here so we can get out of the maze. Once we click here, this is basically a waiting point, and I can relax here for a little bit and rest my fingers and arms. <laughs> and no, I cannot speed up the movement speed for my character in this maze simply because that's how the program is intended that to be for this maze. So now we're going to head back down and out of the maze. We see Bookin being a troll, trying to hide behind the bushes. Now he's wanting to know if we found the rose, and yes we did. And the beast comes out and says, how dare you steal this rose from my maze. Now he's all mad because we stole the rose from his garden. He basically treats us as guests and gives you gifts. Then, he, then we somehow betrayed his kindness by supposedly stealing from him. And he's like, you shall pay for this. Now he's kind of pleading for his life saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I took your rose. He needed a rose to give to his daughter Beauty. He's like, how dare you steal a rose from my daughter? She's a very kind daughter, very sweet, all she wanted was the rose. He didn't mean to offend him and make him mad. Then he's like, you're gonna bring me your daughter or else. I shall take her, you shall be free. He's threatening us, if we don't bring beauty to him, well, he'll never see his home again. Then he's like, okay, very well, I shall return. Then he insists to us that he will not harm her, he will not hurt her or harm her, he just wants someone to make him happy. 
He's very lonely. He says he will try his best to make her happy. So now, uh, we're gonna go left here and back up through the forest and back to Beauty's house. So here, we click on our character here and he's asking Beauty, what's wrong? What's the matter? And she's obviously frightened. She's startled by Bookin jumping out at her and trying to shoo her away so the story can never have a good ending again. So, she offers us to go with her so she won't be frightened by the troll. We offer to go with her and he says, and we say, yes, we can go with you. He won't scare us. And I move my mouse cursor down here, and the reason is, is so we can retain our movement speed. Now we can be brave together, and so we'll get a little bit of uh, dialogue back and forth between do you like the beast, and he's such a good friend, and that they have a lot of fun together. So now Bookin is going to try to come out of the bushes and try to scare us off and shoo us away. But now we in, but now we take our foot and step it down and tell him, no, you will not run, we will not run away and you will not shoo us off and scare us away. He's like, arr, I'll try to get you both. Now we tell him, you better go away, leave us alone. And then he's like, no, I'm not backing down. So we boss our, boss our ways through and he's like, no, stop. And we like, we tell him no. This is another part of this story that I cannot speed up the movement character process. We can't speed up the character movement due to how the program is intended it to be, of course. So she's going to make her way to the beast, and we're going to get a happy ending here after all, after a few select dialogue boxes. get dialogue boxes saying, where was the beast? I was him. He was turned into a beast by a magical spell. And her love for him obviously broke it. Then again, he tells us thank you for the help. This is where I split. This is where my second split is after we finish the story. After all, after all the stories are finished, we will return, we will go to the cave, and I will properly explain why I save and quit there. But for now, in the meantime, we have another story finished up. And we're going to go up. And we're going to make our way to start the Bremen Musician story. Here we have dialogue with the chicken. He's saying, run away, run away. So now we're going to take him to the crossroads and we're going to rescue the chicken, the cat, the dog, and the donkey. And 
There is a particular order to how we rescue the animals for the Bremen Musician story. The chicken is obviously the first since we have to start the story and we're gonna go up here and make our way to the crossroads. Even though we go up here, he says, that's not the way to the crossroads. This is still the fastest route possible since we can skip this dialogue box and we can skip two dialogue boxes here, the one I skipped and then this one here. It is just simply to the right here and we go here because it is the fastest way possible and the most time saving possible. He'll say, okay, this is the place. He says, where is everyone? We were all supposed to meet here. And so, obviously, everyone is scattered throughout several parts of the map because of the troll book and who is trying to scare everybody away. So now we're going to go rescue the kitty. And to rescue the cat, we're going to click on our character here again. Obviously, they are scared of Bookin because he's a troll. He's a, he's a little bit of something of a bully. So now, after a few conversations with the cat, we're going to go up to the crossroads to take him there. I see both of you, but I did not see the donkey or the doggy too. They didn't see him either, so... Obviously, we both know where they're gonna be. So next, we rescue the dog, which is down here... Which is down here by this tree where I mentioned the pumpkin would spawn earlier. The reason I moved my mouse cursor over here to the right or to the left where it is is because so I have to retain the movement speed for my character so I can keep it consistent. Any slight movement of it derails it just by that much and it doesn't take much to do that. So in order to rescue the dog we go after we go right from the crossroads we go we can go down here which is faster. Then we can come down here. The dog's like, rough, rough, you cannot scare me. So we skip this dialog box, click the character again. This is Scott the dog. He obviously barked at us and he thought we were book. He thought I was booking, but it turns out I'm actually a character that's gonna help him out. So, so now we are going to make our way back to the crossroads, and he's gonna go sit by the tree and wait for us until we go and rescue the donkey. Now he's going to tell us we need one more and then the musicians can be on their way to the shed over just past Bremen. So now we are sent on one final task for this story and that is to go rescue the donkey. And we find the donkey tied up with the rope and we have to untie him from the spot that Bookend put him in. So, so here, I go left from Crossroads, south of town to the bridge, and then just past here where we find Snow White. This is the donkey, and he's, and he's asking us, will you please help me, I am tied up. So the fastest way to do this is to click here on this rope, 
as opposed to clicking on the character itself, which will create more dialogue for us to skip. And so by clicking here, we simply go and untie the donkey. Now he's lost, and we have to show him the way to the crossroads. And we're going to make our way back up. What can happen it what can also happen and cause this game to crash is if you are working on a story like the one I'm working on here for instance and if you accidentally click on this book and click on another story that's not completed the game will kind of not necessarily freeze but the eye will pop up like this and there will be a little box saying oops you have started another story you did something you were not supposed to do and thus the game will go back to its menu and it will unfortunately crash and send us back to the DOS menu, meaning we have to restart the game up again. And before I continue any further, I'll be right back. I have to make a restroom run real quick. Oh, that's much better. I apologize for the short delay. Of course, we get another box saying we do not need to go to town. The crossroads is nearby, but we go up to town, and the reason is because, again, that is the most time-saving path possible, and we don't have to go through uh, Borkworm's house. Now we're going to get dialogue conversations between all the animals here, starting with the donkey. Now they're all excited that the band is together and we can move on to over Bremen to, so they can become musicians. So I'm going to keep my mouse cursor once again to the right completely, so that way my character movement speed does not slow down, because that can happen if it is moved even if it's by a slight amount. <laughs> they sure are loud. And yes, they are. Now we can move on. And we go to Bremen Town.
So now we make our way to Bremen Town so they can become musicians. And they're wondering where the road went. And unfortunately, is blocked off. So they're going to rest here. And the house does need some fixing, obviously. But they can seem to make it work, apparently. There's a window over here that we look at. And it turns out there are a couple of people in it that are robbers. These two, these two NPC characters are the bad guys, and they have, they have stolen money from the town, and they are rich. They stole not only money, but food as well. These two guys are robbers, and they're going to try to rob and steal as much as they can. But however, due to our presence, which they're not aware of, we're going to shoot them off and scare them away. So they converse a conversation back and forth to figure out how they're going to scare the robbers and make them run away. Obviously they have no, the animals have no idea that they're robber, actually robbers, and they're going to find out. See, they're rolling their eyes. They're worried, like, oh no, what is that? It must be a monster, but it turns out they're just the animals for the musician story. Now they're going to figure out what are we going to do. They say we can hide under, he says we can hide under, under the table, but that's no good because they'll find us. And they're gonna run away. <laughs> and they rejoice, they're like, oh yeah, look at them go and run. They look like they saw a ghost. Guess they don't like good music. And they'll never be back again because we scared them away. The char our character deduces, he's like, you know, I think they were thieves. And their animals are like, oh my gosh, you don't say. And yes, they stole all their food and money. So they're wondering what to do now since they scared the robbers away. And so they decide they can stay here and make the place workable. And so they all sing goodbye, and then this story is complete. Again, there's nothing I can really do to speed up the character movement whenever stuff like that happens. So I'm going to click... For speedrunning purposes, I click right around here, because if we click down here on the rock, uh, we see something called a newt. So we click either up here or down here. I let go of en the enter key just before I get around right here, because that way, if I'm still holding the enter key as we approach the Snow White story, I will open this book up too fast, and I don't have to, and I will miss my opportunity and chance to click on the Snow White story and thus costing me a few seconds, which can be very costly in a world record pace run or a PB potential. So we're going to go down and we're gonna start the Snow White story. way to uh, the dwarf's house from here is go left down here from this road. And Bookin is curious as to know what happened to Snow White. And she explains that Bookin got, got her lost so she can't find a way back to the dwarf's house. So now we're going to go down here 
and through this road to the forest. And the dwarves have been wondering where she was because they were worried about her. And so she's like, I will tell you about it when I come in. We have a new friend here. His or her name is whatever, the, whatever you named your character. So now we go left here again and we go up this screen and then up one more. Basically we find that Snow White has taken a bite of an apple and now Apparently they think she's dead, but that's actually not true. So we click on her character again. She took a bite of a poisonous apple, and we go down. So we have to find Prince Silver and bring him back here. And so we find Prince Silver here on one screen over from this one tied up on a tree because he obviously thought it was a game and it turns out it was not a game our character will ask if you click on him why are you tied to the tree because he obviously thought it was a game and it turns out he was actually tricked by the troll bucket. And we find that he's been tied up. He thought it was a game and he, the, the troll bucket told him to count to 10. And open my eyes and see a big surprise after he counted to 10. Now he's mad that he says we don't have to untie him, but we have to untie him so we can finish the Snow White story. So we can get additional dialogue by clicking back and forth with the characters, but since this is a tutorial, I'll actually allow the extra dialogue and stuff for just for dialogue purposes to make it more interesting. But in a speed run, but for speedrunning purposes, we avoid as much of the dialogue as we can, the, at least the extra dialogue anyway. So now we rescued Prince Silver, and now we're gonna bring it back up to the, the glass coffin to where Snow White is. He's not sure whether he should kiss her or not, but our character insists that he does, 
so she can be brought back to life to break the spell from the poisonous apple. This is where my third split is for the All Stories category, and I have another category made called Reverse Story Order, which means the stories are done in reverse. And so for Reverse Story Order, I start with Beauty and the Beast, The Bremen Town Musician second, Snow White third, Cinderella fourth, and the last story is Jack and the Beanstalk. So now we're going to go up. And we're going to go talk to Jack to start the Jack and the Beanstalk story. Now we can start finding the magic beans. His mom is mad at him because they traded the he traded the cow for some magic beans. And apparently they do not work, but that is not the case. So we are set on this task to find the magic bean the magic beans so he can grow them and try to defeat that mean old the mean old giant. Okay, so the magic beans, the optimal magic bean spawn would be right here, but it is not right here. So we are going to go to either we start in the Snow White story, or all the way down to the cave, or possibly back to the pond again. The spawn point for the pumpkin, magic bean, and axe are very random. You can either get really good patterns, or really some of the worst patterns. Getting the worst patterns for any of them can make what seem like a good pace of a run, like world record or PB, go disastrous. And it doesn't take much. It only takes one or two for that to happen to a run. So this is not exactly the most optimal, optimal point for the magic beans to be at, but however, for a tutorial, I'm not too worried about that in this case. So now we found it. Now we found the magic beans, and now we're gonna give them back to Jack, and and then we will start the last part of the story for Jack and the Beanstalk, and that is to retrieve his axe so he can cut the giant down. Now, we have found the magic beans for him, and now he can plant them. But he's going to go over this wall here to plant the magic beans because back around here is the garden and he cannot grow the beans there. And he's overly excited, like, oh my gosh, they're growing already. And so, now he's going to climb up and find out where that's going. And he says, see you again soon, thanks. Now, we are going to go to where he is, and it's not far from here, I'll show you. So we're going to go up here. 
and we're going to get more dialogue with Jax. He's worried, saying, oh my gosh, the giant's coming. And we click on our character again, finding out what happened. He climbed the beanstalk until he discovered a giant castle. And it turns out the big old giant had the, the big old giant stole the people from his town. He picked up some of his mother's treasure and the giant came after him. He climbed it down as fast as he could, but unfortunately the giant followed him. And so we have to he ran home to find his axe, but unfortunately it is not at his home. So now we are sent to find his axe. And we're going to go down here and see if it's down here first. Okay, it's not down here. You want the axe to be spawned right here for speedrun. Because right here is the most time-saving point. Because all you will have to do then if it's down here is go up a couple of screens and then skip the dialogue and then wait for the wait for the wait for Jack to cut down the giant and then finish the story and you're done. But if it's not down here, it'll be at one of several one of several places. This is the second most optimal spawn point for the axe since it's down here. That is okay. So now we're going to take the axe back and give it to Jack so he can cut down the giant and not necessarily kill him but make him unconscious again. One, two, three. And so... The giant will never steal anything again. And so, now he says my mom and I will have our treasure back. And this is where another split here is made. And now here we find a uh, bookworm looking for his book. He is worried, freaking out, saying, I cannot find the book anywhere. And we click our character here to find out what happened. He was standing outside his house when he heard someone crying for help. I looked to see who needed help, but we find out no one was there, obviously. And when he came back to his house, it was gone, and we find out that Bookend broke into his house and stole his book. And so now, we're going to make our way down to the cave. Okay, so down here is this cave. We go in here, and here is the cave. But before I go in the cave, I'm going to save and quit here, and I'm going to properly explain why I save and quit just before I walk in the cave. Now, the reason I save and quit down here at this cave is because if we go in the cave right away, the game will either freeze up, or it will completely crash saying there is an out of bounds error or maybe like an out of memory error or something like that. Now, unfortunately, I have no clue or no idea why this happens. I wish I had an answer and I wish I knew, but unfortunately, I do not. I split my save and quit story after it says the game is saved or I go back to this menu here. This is what I'm talking about as far as back to the menu goes. So I'm going to restart Mixed Up Fairy Tales and we're going to continue from the cave. I do pause my timer 
after that, after that split is done, and that is okay, you are absolutely welcome to pause your timer, your split program, whatever you use. After that split is made, so you're not having to wait, so you're not having to stall more time for a world record run. That is completely okay with me. Whatever split program you use does not matter. I'm not going to demand that you use one particular split program, but whatever you are comfortable with for doing runs. If you're doing practice, um, practice runs, you will not need, you will not need a timer if you're just practicing the game or the mechanics of how the game works. So now we're going to load our safe game again. And we're going to go here, play safe game, and you will resume your timer after the first click, left click. Once you gain, once you get movement of your character going, you will resume your timer, and we're going to go in the cave. Here we find Bookin in the cave, going to burn this book. Now he thinks he's all, now he thinks he's all that, and this bossy beast saying, I have this book, now no one will ever read it again. And we try to reason with them, but obviously with trolls, you cannot reason with them. He's like, don't come near me, or I will burn this book and throw it into the fire. Then I might do something mischievous to it. And we try to plead with him, but obviously that doesn't work. And we have to scare, we have to scare him into giving back giving him the book again back to bookend so he can or not bookend bookworm so he can have it now he's going to throw the book and try to throw the book in the in the fire pit here and now we say bookworm come quickly we found out where the book is And he asks, can I have my book back? And he says, no. There's going to be more, more dialogue back and forth saying, give me back my book. Now, this is where Bookworm gets really mad and goes beast mode on Bookin, scaring him into giving us the book again so I can give it to book Bookworm and he can have it again. And you will give it to him right now. And now he sees what kind of a threat Bookworm is when he's mad. Now he's like, don't hurt me here, take it. Now he, now we tell him thank you for returning his book, and he asks, why did you take the book? And then we learn that Bookend cannot read, and so, so we learn that he mixed up all the stories, and he hates books because he never learned how to read. So now, since now we are done with the stories, we are now going to be transported back to the library. Now we are transported back to the library and the teacher asks us if we have picked out a book. And we tell her, yes, I found a great book. And basically, and you live happily ever after. Now, 
my final split is when this little scroll pops up when it says the end the very frame it pops up is when I split my timer and I know it could be tricky to split because it could be a tad late like a lot of the runs I've done my splits have been very late just simply due to missing that spot where you split for the final time of the run and so we sit here through the credits it's not very long or if you do not wish to see the credits you can press Control q again and you can simply stop playing it and that's it so that's it um i'm gonna go ahead and cut my stream for tonight i hope this tutorial was helpful um if you have any further questions anything that i have not covered in this uh pretty long tutorial um i would be more than happy to go over anything or discuss certain tips or strategies that might help me or influence other people that want to run this game if there are runners that are interested uh, you can definitely let me know and I am definitely open to any suggestions that that other people may have so I'm gonna go ahead and cut my string for tonight uh, thank you to those that tuned in and watched it I appreciate it um, I will be back again next time very soon